in the old ways, we say that when we pray in the sacred way, that the the tobacco smoke lifts their prayers up into the air and takes them up to the Creator. But uh, when we enjoy tobacco, just in a personal way, it's it's uh, relaxing. Sometimes uh, it's, it's my meditation that helps me to to uh, gather my thoughts and stuff. So I didn't start smoking until uh, it's just like nineteen. I mean, I didn't start smoking the pipe every day until nineteen eighty nine, ninety, ninety, nineteen ninety. Let's smoke every now and then. My mom gave me a pipe, and and uh, she was a dumpster diver. <laughs> and she found some pipes and gave gave me a one or two of them. So, <laughs> so yeah, I started out because my mom gave me a pipe. Here, son, you need a pipe. But. Uh, yeah, I got up this morning real early and got the got the Canon Rebel cameras out and the crows were out. So I was gonna go and take some video of the crows. It didn't work out too well. The crows they said like crows are like the most observant of all them critters out there. I mean it's like the crows as soon as I like around the corner they see me right then it's like bam you know and it's like it's, uh, faster than anybody faster than the crows are on it and they, they fly away I mean it's like I've never harmed them I don't like you know we're cool but they don't like taking the, they don't like getting their picture made you know they're like all grumpy about it. no you can't take my picture so they fly off, but you know it's it's important to have good relations with the animals, animal kingdom. You know that's one of those old stories. You know when uh, we first came here from you know the stars, we came here and and uh, you know and, and people set up. You know it was like everybody that got here early on they. They had good relations with animals, and and uh, you know they walked in balance and so forth. But uh, you know people get a little bit uh, greedy or whatever, and and uh, they get selfish and they forget about these agreements. So uh, you know one of the agreements with the animals is if we hunt the animal, we have to pray first and ask them to to sacrifice their body. And. Uh, you know, if, they, if they're willing, then when we hunt, they, they show up. And if they're not willing, then, you know, it's, it's like that's not working for them. So, uh, and then after we, we, you know, are able to kill the animal, hunt and kill the animal, and uh, we give an offering. And then one of the common ways is, we, you know, the, the hunter will put some cornmeal in the... Uh, animal's mouth for its spirit to ha have something to eat as it makes its journey to the other world and and, uh, and say a prayer of gratitude and humans stop doing that they, they forgot this agreement so the animals had a big council and uh, all the animals came all the animals on Turtle Island my bell of the world you know and uh this big council and so they say you know if the humans aren't going to keep the agreement that we have with them then uh, we need to give them a disease so that they get sick and, and maybe that will remind them of the agreement 
be consequences. You know, we make agreements and we break those agreements. There's going to be consequences. So, so each each animal went around and, and came up with a disease for uh, humans to catch or be, you know, inflicted with in some way. You know, heart trouble or you know, sugar diabetes or asthma and, and so on. And so uh, each animal was picking one and uh, came to the chipmunk and the chipmunk said, look, you guys, you know, like humans don't, I'm, I'm too skinny, little, no meat. Humans don't hunt me. We get along fine. They're not a bother. I, you know, I don't, I don't see any need to pick a disease. And they're like, no, we're all agreeing to pick a disease. And, you know, don't be an exception here. Go ahead and pick a d disease. And the chipmunk was like, no, I'm not going to pick a disease. And, and Bear was sitting next to the chipmunk. And Bear was getting kind of irritated about this. So, okay, come on, pick a disease. Nope, can't tell me what to do. So Bear, like, got so mad, he just reached down with this big old paw, you know, and like, smack. The chipmunk's kind of quick, you know. Bang. So, uh. All that Bear was able to do is get two talons along its back and uh, make a little, you know, wound on each side of its of its back. And uh, so, ever since then, the chipmunk has had those two white marks like scars on its back, and uh, that's how the the chipmunk got its scars, its white marks on its back. And that reminds us, you know, to keep that agreement as hunters. We have to keep that agreement with it, with animals that we hunt and kill so that uh, we have good relations. And, of course, if the medicine man, uh, you know, somebody comes to the medicine man with a disease that uh, is, is a result of bad relations with the animals, then uh, the medicine man has to have a dialogue with that animal. And so, you know, uh, this person, uh, you know, explain, you know, I'm going to have to have a dialogue and, and uh, you're going to have to have better relations or it's, you know, animal's not going to agree to it. But if everybody works that conversation out, then, you know, the animal agrees and, and that person's healed. And so that's part of the work that the uh, medicine man has to do is have these conversations with the animals. And uh, because of that, the... Uh, this man uh, cannot hunt because if he goes out and hunts a deer one day and then the next day go, yo, deer, I need to talk to you. And, and uh, you know, he's got the blood of a relative. Even though he did it in the right way or whatever, he's got the blood of a relative. That's not a good relationship. So that's why medicine men don't hunt. They don't work. They're available for the people 24-7. And... Uh, you know, the, the one thing they can do is, is uh, have a discipline. They can make things and, and trade, sell, whatever. But uh, they don't sell medicine. And uh, they don't sell their time. So uh, that's, that's one of those things that uh, you have to work with within these, these, these perimeters uh, in order to have good relations with animals and, and be able to uh, be of service to the people. We have to stay in this discipline and these guidelines. And, and, uh, but, uh, I love some ink on rice paper. I started doing that back in college. over 40 years ago. You gotta move fast. There's no way to do it slow. And, you know, I love moving fast, so it's, it's just like a natural. And, uh, so, I guess, uh, I'm gonna do a little painting here in a second. Or, I did already, and it's coming last at the end. I don't know. It's just time, man. Love you guys. Alright. <coughs> this is, uh, See me look off the ink cake. I rubbed it on the stone there and, and just like three reservoirs worth. 
Put it in there. And uh, but yeah. And I try and hold the camera like as high up as I can. And I can't see what is there, but Cardboard, but it happened. Oh, yeah, there again. Yeah, it's a nice wind right there. And then we just switch over to the stuff in the jar. This is gonna dry like stuff in the jar is gonna dry a lot darker. I probably need to like start using some newspaper or something. He touches stuff is so fragile. You know, I'm like slamming into it here. Totally changed after it dries. And uh, that's what we look at right now. And uh, it's like coming home for me, man. Let's this. <laughs> 